Hi, my name's Eloise Bailey in Second Life and while I'm not very good at filmmaking I really enjoy messing around with clothing in Second Life and today I'd like to share with you a really good tutorial I found for um, baking the shading onto the clothing that you make in the free processing program The GIMP. Now I didn't write this tutorial, it was written by a lady called Claire Harford and she writes for the Mistress of Design uh, blog. So I've put the link up for you there, it's a fabulous blog and well worth checking out. Now before we start um, there are some downloads you're going to need to, to carry out for um, this this program to work so um, the first thing I suggest you do is to create a new folder um, name it something you're going to recognize and put it wherever you like I called mine Theta because we're going to be using the RGB Theta plugin so the first thing you're going to need to download are the normal maps now these are a bit like the um, texture maps, the grid maps that you get from uh, Chip Midnight or Robin Wood to draw your clothing onto but they look more like sculpty maps and actually you get the whole avatar rather than the three sections so you're going to need to download and extract those to your new folder once you've done that you need the um, helper that's going to allow the GIMP to recognize Photoshop plugins and that's called PSPI so download it from this link here and uh, extract that to your new folder and once you've done that of course the only thing we need then is the filter itself and that is called RGB Theta and can be found here again download it extract it to your new folder and then we're ready to actually go into the GIMP install these and see how they work so let's do that okay so the first thing we need to do is open the GIMP and allow that to do its startup thing and then once it's opened we need to first of all install the recognizing PSPI that allows us to use our Photoshop plugins so we go to edit preferences and you'll see a box on the left hand side with a list of items there and at the bottom it says folders click on the plus sign at the left of that and then click on plugins and you'll see a box come up on the right hand side now if this box contains anything at all please leave it there don't delete or change anything in that box I learned that the hard way after having to uninstall and reinstall GIMP a few times so we're going to look for a new place for this to look for our PSPI so on the top left you've got a sheet of paper that looks folded over click on that and then on the right hand side an open folder click on that and that takes me straight to my documents where I've stored the items and that's the theta folder I need to open that and I'm looking for a folder called lib at the top here and what I'm going to do with lib is double click all the way through it and every time I double click it takes me closer to the bit I'm looking for which is two circles and then it says PSPIX OK that and you'll see it appear in this box where your plugin folders is on the right hand side so OK that and at this point the GIMP will tell you that it needs to restart in order to activate what we've just installed so OK that and close the GIMP then reopen the GIMP and now we can go to filters at the top of the page and at the bottom of that we'll now be a sentence that says Photoshop plugin settings that wasn't there before so click on that and again you'll see a box come up yours will probably be empty mine's got stuff in because I've practiced this a few times and again we're going to be looking in a new place so click on the left hand side with the folded over paper and then on the right hand side for the open folder and back into the theta folder this time we're looking for the filter itself which should be standalone and it says TS3D underscore RGB theta dot 8BF so click on that and OK it you'll see that appear in your Photoshop plugin settings box and OK that again now this time the GIMP doesn't tell you that it needs to close but if you want it to recognize your filter again we have to close the program and restart it OK, we're now ready to start faking our baking. So we'll start by opening the um, maps that we took, the normal maps. So we go File, Open, 
and I stored mine on my desktop so that's where I'm headed and I'm going to open my normal map file. Now yours won't look like this, mine does because I've already done one of these. This is what we're going to be producing at the end of this tutorial. So I need my layers window so I'm going to look under recently closed docs and there I find layers, channels, paths. Click on that and I'm just going to make invisible the layer that I've created. And this is how your normal maps will look when you first open them. You have there on the right hand side in your layers uh, palette both the male and female maps. So I'm going to concentrate on the female ones because they've got more lumps and bumps so they're more fun to play with. And I'm going to click on that layer, make the male one invisible, click on the female one, then I'm going to go right click and duplicate layer. And on this new layer, well that's where I'm going to apply my filter. So I now go to filters and because we have the new Photoshop plugin, that's called Techslop 3D. We can go into that and there we have RGB Theta. Click on it and you'll get a box come up and there's some sliders on the right hand side. Three boxes of sliders. Leave the top slider alone. It should read 128, 128, 128. Your middle sliders should read 128, 255, 128. It's the bottom sliders that we're going to play with here. So on the range, I'm going to change that to 0 0.20. The fall off, I'm going to change to 1.5. 0. The high, I'm leaving at 255, and I'm going to change the low to 36. Then, I just OK that. And after a few seconds, there we have it. There is our lovely baking. Now, as you can see, only part of this has shone through. We've got the front and we've got the front legs. We haven't got the back legs and we haven't got the back because it's pointing in a certain way. The light source is facing a certain way. So what we need to do now is go back to our normal maps female and duplicate it again. So back down to normal maps female, right click, duplicate layer. I'm going to make the one we've already made invisible, the grey version. You'll see its difference in the in the window there. And I'm going to apply the filter again. So I'm going to go filters and it'll say reshow RGB theta. That second one down. So I'm going to click on that. And again I'm leaving the sliders alone at the top. So 128, 128, 128. In the point 2, the second box down, this time I'm going to leave it at 128 for the R, the G I'm going to slide all the way across to 0, and then I'm leaving the B alone as well at 128. And the range, I haven't saved it, so I'm going to have to change that again to what we had before. So 0 0.20 for the range, 1.50 for the fall off, 255 for the high, and 36 for the low. And OK that. When it colours this time, you'll see that it's the back that's lit up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch off the visibility of the normal maps female, the original normal map, and I'm going to concentrate on the two that we've just made. I'm going to switch the visibility back on of that first one we made, the front there, so now we can't see the back. What do we do about that? We change the blending option on this top layer, the top of the two grey layers, we change the blending option on that. And I'm going to pick, you can, you can see that on your layers palette, above opacity it says mode normal and there's a drop down arrow. And I've been playing with these earlier, you can play with them yourself, but you need to be able to see both. And I particularly liked light and only. There. And there we have it. There is our grey map.